Good morning. It's good to see all of you here in church this morning. I'm grateful that all of you are here. Um, We've been gone for a couple Sundays. We went and took our son George to look at some different colleges and uh, had a first-hand experience in what college tuition is right now. And so uh, after a lot of blood pressure medication, um, we're back and we are ready. Um, But I just want to thank all of you for allowing us to travel, to do these things with my children because to be quite honest with you, I don't spend that much time throughout the year uh, with them because we stay so busy here at the church, but it allowed me an opportunity to really spend some time with them. So thanks to all of you for allowing that to happen. And thanks to all of you for joining us this Sunday morning and worshiping with us virtually. We love having you part of our church, love making you part of our virtual family. And if we can ever do anything for you, please let us know. And if you're downloading this week's sermon, we encourage you that if you found it beneficial, this is also to all of you. If you found this sermon beneficial, do us a favor, simply share it. It's all on social media, on the church's website. All of our social media profiles has it. Just share it. Do a little thing and just simply click the button that says share so we can make a difference in this world. So let's get started. Several weeks ago, I started a sermon series called Summer at St. John the Divine. And basically what we've done is we surveyed all of you during the Holy Week and during the Paschal season. And many of you responded sharing with us topics that you wanted us to talk about on a Sunday morning in a sermon. And we've done just that. Every Sunday we have covered a specific topic that you wanted to hear about. Because one of the things I am firm, firmly believe in, friends, is that my job, one of them, is to equip you with what you are needing, what you are asking for. And so we hope that we've done that over the last several weeks, and today we continue that. But I want to digress a little bit and talk to you today about one of the biggest areas that people don't identify on that survey, but it's perhaps one of the biggest struggles that I hear people come into my office with every single week. It's an area that so many people have difficulties with. It shapes how they see themselves. It shapes how they see other people. It shapes how they live out their life or how they treat other people. It impacts their own walk of faith. It impacts almost every facet of their life. This one struggle that very few people, by the way, had it on their survey. And it is this, negative thinking, negative thoughts. Our thoughts are extraordinarily powerful. If you often want to know why you are where you are right now, chances are they are a sum total of every thought that you've had. It's brought you to this point. One study I read said that 95% of your emotions today are based in what you've been thinking about today. 95%. Another study I read found that children between the ages of two and four were so intelligent, so bright, very gifted children when they did this study on them. But at the age of seven, they already noticed that these same children, only 5% of them, still exhibited that level of intelligence, creativity, ingenuity, and intelligence. The study found that basically what had happened is that people had spoken over them and they started to process those negative thinking. Let me go one step further. 1,700 years ago, there was a man named St. Evagoras Ponticus. He's talked about his name, a word that I want all of you to remember. In fact, we're going to practice it in church. The word is this, logis me, logis me. Can you guys say that with me? Logis me. Now, many of you may have heard of the seven deadly sins that you oftentimes hear about in the Western churches. But logis me is the eight thoughts that the devil or the enemy will put into your mind. You may call them devilish thoughts, but they're thoughts that enter your mind and create behaviors and why you act the way you do. It's called Logis Me. And I want to encourage you, all of you today, that if you don't control your thinking, your thinking is controlling you. I want to encourage you that you'll never be able to change your life if you don't first change the way you think. Let me say that again. I can't change my life until I change the way I think. It's interesting, today is one of the 12 major feast days in our church. It's called Holy Transfiguration. It's when Christ, early on in his ministry, takes Peter, and now James and John are brothers, they're siblings. He takes Peter, 
James and John, up on a mountain called Mount Tabor. And as he's taking them up on the top of this mountain, he knows that for many of them, they've been thinking a certain idea about who Christ is, that he's a special person, he's a special prophet, he's a holy person. But they did not know because their thoughts had been limited about who Christ truly is. So what does he do? He brings them on this mountain, and I want you to look at this icon. This icon is called the Transfiguration of our Savior. He shines so bright that the Bible says he shone like the sun. Just how bright he was. It was so great, the power of that shining was so great that it thrust Peter, James, and John down. Even in the icons, it reflects that they were thrown so far back that their shoes fell off. Several years ago, at the old church, we were watching a funeral procession that was taking place right in front of our church. As this funeral procession was taking place, they had police escorts. One of the police officers, sadly, was trying to come up forward to the top of the, of the procession. As he was coming up forward, a car came that was not part of the procession, swerved into the procession, and hit this police officer who was on this motorcycle. It hit him so far hard and so much, so much power that he ended up flying about seven or eight feet from that moment, from that area. Do you know that was still what was there? Was his boot. The power was so great that when it hit him, it literally knocked him out of his shoes. And by God's grace, he's living, he's done many of our services here at our church. He made it through all that. But I'm just simply kind of giving you an idea that for the power of that to happen, it must have been so great that it would knock someone off and out of their shoes. I love how in the gospel, in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 2, this is your refrigerator verse for the week, a verse that I want you to remember. Romans 12, verse 2, it says this. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. So let me break this down. Stop following what the world is telling you what you need to be. Stop telling them what your identity needs to be what your values need to be. Stop following the patterns of this world. This is what St. Paul is saying. But be transformed. One way of translating it would be, but be transfigured by the renewing of what? Your mind. Notice it didn't say the renewing of your heart. It said the renewing of what you've been thinking about. So I've given you why this is so important, the power of our thoughts, this logi is me, how the enemy it's playground oftentimes is our mind. Let me give you three areas that I want you to work on this week. I'm going to call these the three S's. Here's number one. In order for you to deal with your thoughts, and all of us have them, by the way, oftentimes negative, you have to first study them. That's the first S. Study your thoughts. Now, lean into me, everyone. Yeah, lean in a little bit more. Okay, good. You cannot fight something that you're unaware of. You cannot fight something that you're not aware of. You have to study what you've been thinking about. So I want to give you an assignment. This is what I do with almost every single person that comes into our office. Many of you are parishioners, you know who you are. And I'll tell them, at every, take a day this week, any day you choose, doesn't matter, at 9, 12, and 5 p.m., one day, I'm not only asking you, and I just want you to write down what you've been thinking about at that moment, 9, 12, and 5, Simply write them down. Simply think about what you've been thinking about. And the Greek word for this is nepsis. Nepsis is the self-aware, to be aware of what I am thinking about. I was reading recently in the 1960s about this African-American man who grew up in the projects. And this, as he was living in these projects, his father was never to be around. The young African-American man grew up in the projects where there was no opportunity. He started to, think of, started to think these thoughts that I'll never accomplish anything, I'll never achieve anything. The people that were around him were just as bad as he was, so he began breaking into different vehicles, breaking into different shops and stealing from people. Then one day, a trainer said to him, you're thinking the wrong thoughts. You could really do great things in your life if you would simply change the way you're thinking. Well, long story short, that African-American man continued to train in the boxing arena and ended up, ended up becoming, one year later after that 
conversation with that trainer, becoming the world heavyweight champion of the world, George Foreman. And I think to all of us, how many of us are missing out on being a champion in our own life because we're allowing the negative thoughts dictate our life? Here's number two. We study. Second of all, we surrender our thoughts. You have to surrender them. In other words, not only are you aware of them, but I want you to ask yourself questions about those thoughts. So let me give you an example. When you think those thoughts, ask them, would Christ think those thoughts? Does it line up with what God teaches about you? When you're thinking those thoughts of unforgiveness, are you reminding yourself that God says 70 times 7 is forgiveness? When you're thinking about taking a Sunday off, none of you did that, but if you're thinking about taking a Sunday off, you remember that God says that I want you to be in my house, how great it is when people are in my house worshiping. When you find yourself going through these temptations and the strongholds of this world, that are you reminding yourself that I need to lean on God to get me through that? So here's the questions I want you to ask yourself. Does it line up with the Bible? Will it make me more like Christ? Would the Theotokos, the Virgin Mary, would she agree with that thought? Does that thought give me godly peace? We need to surrender it. You study it, then you surrender it by asking those questions. And here's the third one, and that is that you just simply substitute those thoughts. Study, surrender, substitute. In my own life, I wouldn't be standing before you if I didn't take what I'm sharing with you to heart. For years and years, many of you know this already, I served as the pastoral assistant of this church. I had many opportunities, though, to serve as a priest in other communities. But my thoughts would always tell me, Nick, you can't do it. No one's going to listen to you. You don't have the gifts, the qualifications. And then I would justify it by saying, well, you know what, I just don't want to spend my entire life serving in a church, and I won't miss, I'll miss out on my kids. And I'll miss. All these thoughts that all of us can create in our own mind are stories that, and it wasn't until we had this collective agreement that we have to stop letting those thoughts dictate our life. You have to substitute them with godly thoughts. I'll leave you with this last verse. The prophet Isaiah said, God will give to those godly peace when your thoughts are on him, when your thoughts are on Christ. I leave you with this. I want us to play a little imagination game. Imagine for a moment that you're a landlord and you own a hotel. And there are a lot of these different rooms in this hotel that you basically lease out to the people. You being the landlord can decide who gets into that hotel because you're the landlord. You choose who is allowed to come in, who's, who's not able to stay. And, but once you allow those people to come into that hotel, they have total reign to all the amenities of your hotel. They have access to everything you give them power to have. Now imagine for a moment that that hotel is your mind. And every one of those rooms that are in your mind, things are occupying it. How many of you would say that unforgiveness is occupying a room in your hotel? Anger, pride, money, politics, worry, fear. Can I just tell you something? Whatever you give space to has power over you. And I'm encouraging a lot of you today, I'm actually giving you permission, you need to send out the eviction notices today. You need to send them out today. Study those thoughts. Nine, 12, and five. Surrender those thoughts. Do they match up to those questions? And then you substitute those thoughts. Because I can't change my life until I change the way I am thinking. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for downloading this message. I hope that in some small way, this sermon can inspire you, motivate you, and guide you in your walk of faith. I'm a firm believer, friends, in what I like to call practical Christianity basically trying my best to give you some steps and some tips that you can follow to apply this sermon in your everyday walk of faith. And so if you have found this sermon beneficial, do me a favor. Not only do I want you to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, where you get access to all of our sermons, 
but I also want you to share them with your family and your friends. Let's go out and make a difference in this world, and hopefully this sermon can be one way that we do just that. I also want you to stay in touch with us all throughout the week on our social media platforms. Friends, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook and Twitter, all under the headings of The Lows. And this past year, Roxanne and I started sending out these daily inspirational messages. And if you would like to receive those messages, go to our website at thelows.com forward slash subscribe. And all you have to do is simply put up your email address and every day at 7 a.m. you'll receive one of our daily words of encouragement. And finally, friends, if I can ever be of assistance to you, do me a favor. You can stay in touch with me by going and emailing me at fathernicholas at thelows.com. That's fathernicholas at thelows.com. Once again, everyone, thanks so much for downloading this message. God bless you and stay strong in your walk of faith.